who was he? His character. He was honest. He was a self-starter. He was transparent. He was a family man. And he was so dear to me. He was my friend. You know, El Elson was a guy that I could count on. He'd give the straight scoop. He was, you know, for sure he was a supporter, but he was a supporter for the right reasons um, because he demanded of me the same thing that he demanded among his professionals and, and the, t the team that he had. And therefore, we had really a very tight relationship. Well, if you see a picture of Elson, you always see a smile on his face, and I think it just drew everybody to him. He and Carmento, his wife, uh, a wonderful couple who brought people together. And uh, this was not just about the university, although he was the president of the university, but this was about the university and the community. And his legacy, I think, uh, for me, the legacy he provided is the economic vitality of this community has uh, prospered. He knew that keeping people here, good intellectual capital here, kept families here and benefited our community. And he worked very hard on that. I only wish Elson had stuck around. What amazed me about him is he never seemed to forget anybody's name. You know, I mean, I'd see him at football games and he'd walk up to people that I knew that he'd only met once or twice and he knew their name and all about them. You know, he just, everybody that talked to him, he would touch them. You know, he just, he was super. You, I mean, it's just hard to say, you know, I had a lot of respect for the person. There was a time when it was Com University night and I was over there to cover, and so I'm looking for President Floyd. And I could tell where he was because there was a, a cloud of dust in the distance. And I knew that at the head of that cloud of dust, kicked up by at least 100 students following him around, would be President Floyd. Um, he was a gentleman, uh, definitely a colleague. Um, I do believe he was before his time when you speak of higher education and what he has done. But I think the most important thing to me was that he was a very good friend and remained a friend for a very long time. And so, if anything, that's not only what I'm going to cherish, but that's what I always would know as Elson Floor. I think probably one of the most poignant moments probably is when I was hired. Elson came in early June of the, actually it was before he was going to be starting his job July 1, asked to sit with me to interview me. He only gave me 30 minutes. But uh, lo and behold, June 30th, 7 o'clock p.m., I get a call, pick me up from the airport. So picked him up from the airport. We went to the president's house. We looked at this empty home. He nodded, said, okay, let's go to the office. Mind you now, this is around 7.30, 8 o'clock. Do you know we worked until 3 p.m., excuse me, 3 a.m. in the morning, Saturday. And so I assumed I was working with him. Didn't make no assumptions, though, however, I ask him, I, um, do I to see you on Monday? He says, no, you'll see me on Saturday morning at eight o'clock. That's the first day I start work. And I never made the assumption I was hired, but I assumed that time that I was hired. But what I learned from that experience is that you can never underestimate Elson Floyd. But one thing you can know about him is that he's gonna always look out for the best interests of those that are around him. And so from that, that became probably one of the most poignant points of our start of our relationship, start of our friendship. And to this day, I'll always cherish that, always. One of the more difficult days uh, working for Elson Floyd was on 9-11. Uh, I remember watching uh, the second plane hit as uh, so we had a TV in our office and we had all been watching the first plane, uh, the coverage of the first plane, but when the second plane hit, we knew that we were dealing with something more more grave, and at that time we were training um, a contingent of students from the United Arab Emirates, and it was fairly public. It was a big deal that these students had come over and were going through the international pilot training program, and it was even clear where they were living in an apartment complex in Battle Creek, and he was very concerned, Elson was very concerned, uh, for the safety of those students, and within uh, a few hours we had a van over there to pick up those students and they were brought to the Gilmore House uh, where they stayed for quite some time. 
and I think that really speaks to the character of Elson Floyd and that the students were the first thing on his mind in their safety. I can remember uh, during a snowstorm, uh, he called me and said, well, what are you doing? It's nothing. What are your grandsons doing? Nothing. Why don't you come over and we can go sledding? So the first one down the hill after we got there was Dr. Floyd. <laughs> He, he was the one that went down first, and I think he went down that hill more than the kids did. So, and he had a great time. He enjoyed himself. Well, he was a person whom I got to know after he came to Western. But I first got to know him, or meet him, when he came as a candidate for the position after Dr. Haneke now announced his retirement, and a, a search committee was formed, and I was asked to serve on that committee. I was very happy to do so. And we interviewed some six candidates in Chicago, and they, we flew them in, interviewed them, and they flew out. And, uh, but the third person that we interviewed was Dr. Elson Floyd. Uh, he was one who walked into the room. I'm saying, who is this man? Uh, because he introduced himself to each person on the committee before he sat down. And two minutes later, I was so impressed. Only two minutes. I was so impressed with his presence, his mannerism, and his response to our probing questions. So I said, this man will be a president somewhere, sometime, so why not Western? And that was my first time meeting Dr. Floyd, uh, Elson Floyd. Folks that got the pleasure of working with him day to day in the president's office were able to see some of the facets of the gem that were more than the public persona uh, that most people saw around town. You know, you really got to see his tireless work effort, uh, his passion for what he was doing, uh, real passion for changing people's lives, uh, his sense of humor, very wicked sense of humor. Uh, but also just the little things. Uh, he would say hello to people and you'd be amazed at how many people he would know their names and would, would address them by name, students, faculty, you name it. Uh, but he would also notice a crack in the sidewalk and hop on the phone and call maintenance and say, get that sidewalk crack fixed, you know, it's dangerous. Uh, and it would be those little things that you know that only Elson would, would notice and make sure uh, they were taken care of. He demanded the best, and if you didn't perform, you were gonna be finding something else to do. And that happened to a few people. Uh, and, you know, when he'd relay some of those stories, because again, we were pretty tight, so if there was a problem with a certain individual and, and he had to walk through a process of, you know, what do I do? He reached out to me to see how I would handle it. But he did the right thing. I mean, he demanded, uh, that your personal life be as strong as your professional life. Uh, he was a really good character. Under his leadership, they made the main campus wireless, so students had access. He was the one that was able to get uh, the, the engineering college started and get those shovels in the ground and open up a brand new campus and the business technology and research park. Uh, that just helped students in a myriad of ways and it helped the companies in town because they had students who could be interns. The students, in turn, learned much more upfront craft and business and had opportunities that were right there in their backyard that might not otherwise have been available. Folks just were amazed by the fact that he was willing to go forward with some of these things, thinking a little outside of the box. The Aviation College moving over to W.K. Kellogg in Battle Creek, that opened up a lot more opportunities for those aviation students than what they were currently being able to do at the Kalamazoo Airport. Everyone knows that Elson 
Doc, as we would call him, uh, was a great educator. Uh, that he was very uh, concerned about his students. But there's another side, a softer side, and that is Elson Floyd, the person and the friend. Elson, outside of the public viewpoint, was a very private individual. Uh, he was a caring individual, and he cared about children and his students. And his love for his students, and I say his students, is because that's the way he perceived them, that they were his students, that he was responsible for them, and he should take care of them. And so he got to know them. Uh, and that personal side of him, where he would go out, walk around the campus, meet and greet the kids, uh, that was something that he enjoyed doing. That was that soft, private side of him. Uh, when you talk to people that worked with him as an educator, you may get a different picture. <laughs> he was a very determined individual, a uh, driven individual, and uh, no-nonsense individual. But when it came to the students and children, he was a different person. The relationship that I had with Dr. Floyd was a mentoring one. But I think through the relationship that we developed over time and the work that we did together, uh, both larger Western Michigan University committee work as well as graduate student work, um, I got to observe what it was like to be a leader uh, on a campus and to function in that role. And um, many of the things that I learned from Dr. Floyd, I continue to carry with me in the work that I do today. I think one great story uh, was on a, on a wintry day in the middle of the winter break. The university was closed and we had a, a good snowstorm and you know, typical Elson uh, wasn't gonna just sit at home. So he was out walking the campus to make sure that the sidewalks were, were shoveled and the, the, the parking lots were plowed so students could get around. And most students are gone during the break, but there was an international student who probably struggled a little bit with Michigan winters. And uh, he saw this student trying to walk through a snow drift in tennis shoes and went up to the student and said, you know, where are your boots? And the student didn't have any boots. Uh, Elson took his boots off, gave them to the student, and said, you know, get into, get into some shelter and, and get home. And uh, we only know of this story uh, because obviously at that point, Elson is standing out in a parking lot uh, with no boots on. And so he had to call public safety and say, come pick me up in this parking lot so I can, I can get some shoes on. So that's how we know of that story. When you think of Dr. Elson S. Floyd, you, you think of a very stately man. If you ever saw him personally or had the experience of being around him, he had a persona that was just so inviting, but it was a persona that was very strong, very independent, but very forward thinking. And so having the opportunity to serve as a special assistant probably was one of the most phenomenal experiences because what it really did was shaped not necessarily who I am, but it has complemented me in my life, in my work experience, and just personally. And so when you think about higher education, you see that name, Dr. Elson S. Floyd, president, the man who many would love to be. And I walk away and say, I'm glad to have known him. Well, you know, Elson had a heart. That was for sure, it was huge. And um, this terrible disease that took his life, someday we're gonna have a cure for that. And that's a good thing. We referred to him as Doc. We didn't call him Dr. Floyd or Elson Floyd. It was Doc, it was just Doc. And we, and we are going to miss Doc. He was too young to leave this earth. He had too much to give. And I'm really sad that we couldn't be here and shake his hand and give him a hug. Working with Elson Floyd was uh, the best time I've ever had in my entire career. Uh, he was an amazing man, a gifted man, but I think we know um, that we're all a better place and Western Michigan University is a better place because of him. When he passed, I remember going home and telling my wife, I hope they name the building after him because he deserves it, you know. But Elson was a sincere man and it was not about Elson I found out or 
came to realize it was not about Elson. It was Elson the servant. He wanted to serve students. He wanted to make sure they got an outstanding, excellent education. And I began to tear here and uh, because he was so dear to me. He was my friend and he left us too soon. And I think his wife and his mother for sharing him with us at Weston, especially at Weston. He was one I admired, and he was so dear to me. He was my friend.